For those of you who may be new, you know, as I was, don't know about you, but coming up in one of the, what I call one of the big three traditions, the Judeo-Christian or Islamic tradition, two things you don't talk about in church, sex and money. <laughs> Arguably two of the most important things in your life, but you don't talk about that in church. Well, we're a little different, but I wanted to say this is the one time where we take liberty. I called it Sermon on the Amount. And yeah, on the, yeah, I apologize, I, that's the poet in me. Took a little liberty for our Christian friends, but I'll acknowledge Matthew 5th, 6th, and 7th chapter, as I recall, the, the gospels there of Jesus of Nazareth, where he spoke to moral teachings that became known as the Sermon on the Mount. This is the Sermon on the Amount. Tanya's got a thermometer in the hallway with the amount on it. It's $129,000. I know somebody could write that check today, but we're not talking about that. <laughs> so good morning again, beloveds, and welcome to SUF, the Sedona Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. Know that I welcome you in the name of the ancestors upon whose shoulders I stand, and please know that I welcome you in the name of all that is holy, special, and sacred for you. I am the Reverend Anthony Umtuaswa Johnson, proudly serving as the minister of this most welcoming congregation. So at this time, I'd like to share the words that come to us from our friend across the water, a place called the Unitarian Universalist Church of Dublin, Ireland. You see here, we do not ask what you believe. We do not expect you to think the way that we do. Kind of different, huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> I love that because as you heard me say, I could almost stop right there. We do not ask what you believe or expect you to think the way we do. But I shan't stop. No. What do we ask? We ask that you try to live a kind and a helpful life with the dignity proper to that of a human being. So welcome all who believe that religion is wider than any sect and deeper, much deeper than any set of opinions, including my own. We have three things we love, like little nuggets that we hope you'll find when you come here on Sunday mornings. Friendship, strength, and encouragement for daily living. Things that you can use in your life. That's what keeps us moving. And as I like to phrase it, Otherwise, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. If it ain't got that swing, and that's the swing. I would like to digress and take a moment now and acknowledge and thank our empath social warrior, Patty Delp, for her awesome delivery on last Sunday. Can we get it? Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Patty. This Sunday, as I mentioned, our message is entitled Sermon on the Amount. Put that in context a little bit. We know this is kind of a trying time, or as I call it, a time of tumult where we find ourselves. Yeah. Going to learn a lot during times of tumult, times of challenge. They teach us. Arguably times of devastation, life-changing. And sometimes, and way too often, life ending. Starvation and war in our face. Unprecedented, a new level that you and I may have never seen before. 
Speaking of seeing, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes, if you're willing, and engage with my favorite shaman, also known as quantum physicist Albert Einstein said about our most powerful force, and that's our imagination. So I'd like you to engage your imagination with me for a few moments and take a little trip to a kingdom. Once there was a kingdom far, far away where love was the rule of the day. Nothing more and nothing less than to give your friend your best. Now there's much more of this story that I could tell to make the hardest heart swell. That's when love was king. When love was king. I remember. Can you remember when love was king? I remember. You see, he ruled the, ruled the land with his fist unfurled. With open arms to the world. Of hungry children, first he would speak. Of hungry children, first he would think to pull their lives from the brink when love was king. He rescued souls lost in the sea. In drifting vessels, he would hear their plea. That's when love was king. He threw a line before they'd sink and give the thirsty ones a drink. He told the meek that they should try to use the sword to smite the lie that being kind is for the weak. I want you to do me a favor now. If you, if you keep open, that's, if you got to open, that's okay. But we use, I want you to raise your left hand with me, if you would. And I want to smite that lie. Can we just smite the lie? Three, smite the lie. Smite the lie, smite the lie that being kind is for the weak. We smite that, we smited that lie. <laughs> he gave the thirsty ones a drink. He told the meek that they should try to use the sword to smite the lie that being kind is for the weak. That's when love was king. I pray the Lord these words we seek <laughs> when love was king. He showed respect for every woman and every man regardless of their skin or their clan. Now beside him stood his mighty queen, an equal force, wise and keen. He lifted up the underneath and all his wealth he did bequeath. To those who toiled, he bequeathed it to those who toiled without a gain. So they would remember his reign. So my friends, please seek some place to call your own. Right next to this mighty shining throne. When love was king. When love was king. Words by Mr. Gregory Porter. So yeah, in spite of it all, I'm betting on you. I'm betting on you. And I, me too. So I ask, why are you here? What can we do at this time? I believe our reality is, the reality is quite simple. We exist to care for one another. As Robin says sometime, Susanna says sometime, we sing it sometime, building a new way. Getting stronger every day. Maintaining our, con our connections to one another and nurturing all of our members and all of our friends. Our fellowship is enriched by participation and contribution to our rich array of activities 
Sunday services, discussion groups, classes, I might say dynamic discussions, <laughs> social gatherings, and much, much more. All of this depends on the three T's, time, talent, and treasure. Our first T is time, your time. And I want to acknowledge out loud and on purpose all of our volunteers. The only reason I can stand here on Sunday and do what I do is because of the volunteers who make this place work. So I want to give a hand to our volunteers. Thank you, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. The second T is for talent. Oh, we have such talented folk. Michael will be displaying it on some of it next Sunday in our, what we call our talent show. But know that your talent is welcome here. Your skill set, your wheelhouse, if you will. Your service, your service. Remember what Muhammad Ali said about service. Service is the rent that you pay for your room here on the mighty earth. Service is your rent that you must pay for the space that you take up. Now, a third T stands for treasure or money or an amount. And I've mentioned our amount this year is $129,000. Numbers that are in our annual report, by the way, and unlike many churches, full transparency to all members at all times. I'm so happy to say. That's why I like being a UU. You ain't, ain't trying to fool nobody in no time. This is your ministry. This is your congregation. We grow from up this way. And as a former knucklehead from the 60s and 70s, burning up stuff and trying to make a difference, we talk about what back then? Power to the people. That's what congressional polity is in a real way. It, whatever, you want to see something happen here? It can, Steve, where you at, Steve? Am I, Steve Sleeves, uh, where you at? Are you here? No, not, not you, Steve, the other Steve. He was he left. Okay. I'm calling him out because all right, he's gone. He 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 hiding. No, I don't see him. But he came here months ago talking about oh, you know, you're only doing nothing around the climate. And you only climate control people enough. I said, okay, Steve, what, what would you like to see happen here? Now he's leading up and in charge of our climate thing. You'll see, you'll be reading all about it and we're marching and the building and climate report. Got a book club thing around the climate. You got a passion in a wheelhouse? Bring it. <laughs> so, <clears throat> now it's true that the bulk of our income, 80% of it, as a matter of fact, comes from your annual pledges. Absolutely. Every year we ask that you make a pledge that supports our mission. This place is where we say in our new affirmation, we heard that new one, where we nurture inclusive community, inspire spiritual and personal growth, and act as a beacon for social justice. And our dear mother Teresa reminds us that, you know, really all, all that we do is just a drop in the ocean. It's just a drop in the ocean. Ah, uh, but she says the ocean would never be the same without your drop. Without your drop. She says if the drop were not there, the ocean would be missing something. <laughs> All right, we hear a lot about money during our pledge drive time. And money, money is real, it's necessary, it's needed, and it's loved. But today I want to throw another word into our consciousness around money, our calculating mentality, our profit-driven selves, and that word is value. 
value. Hmm. Money is translated as value. Value is translated as money. So my offering today is that value is the true lifeblood of our ministry. Our values, what we stand for. Money only represents how these values, how our values are translated. Yeah. So, Churchill put it this way. We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. We make a life by what we give. So, Suf, I don't want, Suf is not another charity that you contribute to. Let that go. That ain't us. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. It is, in fact, our spiritual home where we live out our values in living color, out loud and on purpose. <clears throat> in community and as a community, in real time, now time, and for all future time. Hmm. I want to digress and mention something about future time. It's called legacy giving. All of you received that pledge letter, and there's a call in there to please consider being a legacy donor. That is naming Suf as a beneficiary upon your passing. You do know that none of us here are getting out of here alive. <laughs> I don't know if you got the memo. None of us are. So I want to share a quick little story with you about a little girl who experienced a major breakthrough in her life when she learned how to tie her shoe. It was a major breakthrough. But instead of being happy and excited, she was overcome by tears. She started crying. And daddy said, girl, what's wrong? Why are you crying? And she said, I have to tie my shoes, she said. You just learned how to, dad said. It isn't that hard, is it? And she said, I know, I know but I'm going to have to do it for the rest of my life. I'm going to have to do it for the rest of my life. Let me speak up. <laughs> she said, that's you and me. We're going to be giving and receiving for the rest of our lives. So today I'm asking for your pledge to be based upon value represented by money. Remember, our money represents how value is translated. How much I give, how much you give, represents how much value Suf has for you and how much value Suf represents or has the potential to represent. So I don't want you to give to keep the lights on. I don't want you to give to save a sinking ship or to keep a ship afloat, no. I want you to give to actualize your dreams, to actualize your values. I ask for you to be generous in your pledge, believe in the potential of this fellowship. I'm asking simply, will you stand with me? Will you stand with us? Let the world know <laughs> when they hear about us, our Sioux values are important to us and to our family, and to our friends, and to our entire community, and yes, like that drop, to the whole entire world. May it be so, and so it is. Blessed be, amen, and I shade.